Um, you can access that on YouTube and on the internet. It's there. Carl Cameron, uh, uh, who is no you know, radical leftist, and certainly not an anti-Semite, and certainly not anti-Israel. I mean, Fox News ran this four-part series about this, and yet we've heard nothing since then. They have not disavowed it, um, though they've tried to take it off the internet, and, and uh, they've been very vehement about that. But uh, so I would simply answer that. I would read my book. It's very short. Um, cost 10 bucks. <laughs> and uh, look at the Fox News four-part series by Carl Cameron. Very good reporting. And they just dropped it like a hot potato. I wonder why. Next. Uh, hello. I'm Linda from Macon, Georgia. Uh, Republican, staunch conservative, but reading on antiwar.com, donating to antiwar.com, again, to the horror of bloggers in Georgia when I write on there. But in light of uh, what's been said about who, know, who knew what, when about the war, uh, or about our attack on 9-11, by watching various media outlets right after the attack, I was able to put together that Alan Greenspan was out of the country, Bill Clinton was out of the country, Al Gore was out of the country, and I just recently found out that the Axis of Evil writer, Froome, was also out of the country. I'm trying to find, piece all this together, well, and what I want to know is this, this cannot be a coincidence. Okay, well here's another coincidence. I was out of the country. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, I was on my, well actually, no, that's not quite accurate. I was on my way out of the country. I was on my way to Yugoslavia, and, uh, and then I thought, well, I'll stop and visit my parents in New York City. Mistake. Well, actually, maybe it was a good thing. And uh, so, of course, we never got out of the country. So, I don't know, you know, I mean, it didn't seem like a question that, you know, I'll, I'll just let your statement sort of hang out there in the air and take the next one over here. Yes, thank you. Dennis Kilcoin from Alexandria, Virginia. And uh, given all you've written on the history of the conservative movement and its character, I wonder if you could comment on the following. Uh, it's really astounding that we now have conservatives aggressively defending this notion that there's an inherent authority in the president to make war, to, to kidnap and send off for torture and so forth, mm -hmm. and to spy on us without warrants. Um, these are the same people who, uh, of course, they would have impeached and convicted Clinton if he'd done any of the same. And uh, they also say that there is, there is no inherent right in the Constitution of abortion, but it's all from the same kind of school of jurisprudence. It seems, is this just hypocrisy, or what does it say about the real priorities of modern conservatives? Well, look, I mean, I don't think there are any real conservatives left. Um, I mean, you're going to see these people change their minds when Hillary Clinton is elected president. I mean, do they want her to have the power of rendition? I don't think so. And I think that, <laughs> so I mean, this is partisan conservatism. It's not the old ideological conservatism of the old you know, National Review days that I remember, and perhaps you do too. Um, so it all depends on whose ox is being gored. And uh, the, you know, these people have no principles, and it's, they have no memory. It's like they're stuck in the present. You know, it's very American, you know, now. You know, who's president now? What benefits me now? You know, next, you know, next year, next week, next month, you know, it doesn't matter to them. It's just, can they get some immediate advantage? Which hardly seems a conservative thing to do, but then, so it goes. Next. I'm Bob Schillera from Lake Zurich, Illinois. And I'm wondering about this most recent uh, funding bill that the S Senate has passed. Yeah. I think $100 billion to get us through September. Yeah. Is that $25 billion a month? Wasn't the original figure $5 billion a month? Is that, I mean, what, what am I missing here? Why hasn't anybody pointed that out on the national news? They talk in terms of $100 billion, doesn't mean too much, but $25 well, you know, billion dollars a month? Is that right. what it's costing? Yes, you? and plus, you know, you have to remember that it, it, it's not just like a funding bill for Iraq. There's all this other stuff in there that the Democrats got in there, pork for their home districts, I mean, just all kinds of stuff, but it's just thrown in there that is essentially a bribe to anti-war liberal Democrats saying, look, we'll give you this, you know, Head Start program, we'll give you this, you know, subsidy, you know, whatever. Forget your anti-war principles, remember you're a statist, 
and you know we'll give you this money and it's you know it, it's it's log rolling basically next uh, Sam Bozdeff University of Dallas um, I'm concerned about the people that uh, you pointed out the, of the uh, conservatives people of like the crystals who arguing for this transformation of the of the Middle East and how they square that with actually what's being done in Iraq with the creation of the socialist economy yeah. with the police state that's being uh, put in place, the, the billion dollar permanent uh, embassy and all the bases all over the country. Right. How does this square with exporting Americanism? Is this the Americanism that they visualize for our future? Right. You think? Well, you see, you have to understand that there's the, we don't really have time to answer this question, but there's what they say they believe and what they really want to do what their real objective is and what the ideological veneer is. You know, the exoteric and the esoteric meaning of what their program is. Two, two very different things. Read your Strauss, that's all I can say, that's my hint. That's it. Oh, one more? Okay, uh, is there one more? Yes, uh, um, I wanted to ask, uh, uh, you know, we have this constant fear-mongering from the government and the media and as a result of it, the public perception of the threat from the terrorists is just wildly out of proportion to the actual threat, which I think is about the same as slipping in your bathtub and dying. Uh, so my question is, 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 can this issue be framed effectively? And if so, how, how can we do it? I mean, because fear is really the basis of how they're compromising our liberties. Well, I mean, remember how they ginned up the war against Iraq. And you know, the, the nuclear cloud imagery. I mean, it's all about imagery. You know, it's not about ideas. You know, it's about images that they evoke. I remember Condi was saying, well, you know, we don't have to wait for a mushroom cloud to, you know, blah, 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 whatever. And then Dick Cheney gets on TV, nuclear. And just keep repeating the same word. People are very afraid of a nuclear war. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, we used to play a game. Let's pretend it's been a nuclear war. It was like the worst thing in the world, nukes. So Americans are very afraid of radiation and nuclear anything. So, I mean, against that kind of irrational fear, you know, I, I'm not sure, you know, right off the top of my head what, what the answer is. You know, I think that really we have to teach people that the main danger is really in Washington and, and, and it's not coming from abroad. And that if, if there's going to be a nuclear attack in America, it's probably going to be an accident at a nuclear power plant. So, you know, anyway, that's it. Thank you.